go ahead and get started. Turn off my video here. Alrighty. So I am so excited to be joining you today to talk about the Multi-System Youth Program. This is a program that's very near and dear to my heart to say the least. So I will try my best to keep it brief and to the point because I know we have just a small time allotted. Um, we have a lot of information to cover. Next slide, please. I wanna start with some general information regarding the how and who of the MSY program. And I know that really sounds like Dr. Seuss, um, but the MSY program was created by the Governor's Office of Children's Initiatives in the Family and Children First Cabinet Council. The Ohio Department of Medicaid developed the state level program back in 2019. This program was developed to provide technical and financial assistance to children, youth, and families with complex multi-system needs. ODM administers the MSY Technical Assistance and Funding Program in partnership with the Ohio Departments of Family and Children First, Mental Health and Addiction Services, Developmental Disabilities, Youth Services, Job and Family Services, and Education. And every single department that is listed here, we do have representation on our MSY team. I know that we've all heard how there is no I in team, needless to say, as I'm sure you are all well aware with these types of situations, it does take a village to work with toward a resolution. So I am very blessed to have this team. Next slide, please. The MSY program is a cross-agency effort that aims to address the needs of the youth who require supports from multiple systems. Generally, cases come to the state level when challenges are encountered at the local level. The high-level goal for this program, or the high-level goals for this program, is to prevent situations in which parents have to give up custody to obtain access to services. This is often referred to as custody relinquishment, and we see this mainly due to the cost of treatment. It's also to support children as they transition back to family-based settings following relinquishment, and to provide technical assistance and guidance to our local county partners. Next slide, please. Ohio Family and Children First and the Family and Children First Councils play a vital role in the lives of our MSY youth and families. Ohio Family and Children First is a partnership of state and local government, communities and families, that enhance the well being of Ohio's children and families by building community capacity, coordinating systems and services, and engaging families. The vision of Ohio's Family and Children First is for every child and family to thrive and succeed within healthy communities, which we know can be extremely challenging. The County Family and Children First teams assist with the magnitude of things. Just a few to say the least here are collaboration of services, liaisons for the MSY application process, assisting with care conferences and technical assistance, facilitating wraparound and care coordination. And I know, again, this is just a few highlights because our counties I know are drowning, their plates are so full. There is a team approach with every MSY technical assistance and funding request. Children, families, and local public and private agencies engage the state team for guidance, connection to resources, and access to targeted funding for services and supports. The team approach has actually been amazing. I know the MSY team and others, even on this call, have heard me say this several times. To be able to engage with the county care teams and bring together our ideas by brainstorming resources for services and supports that are needed has just been so fulfilling and so much has been learned by everyone. I also feel that the care team relationships have grown as we work together through these complex cases and resource linkage has been strengthened. So I only hope that this continues to expand as we continue to work together. Next slide. This slide provides specifics regarding the MSY application process itself. We receive MSY applications 
applications submitted by the County Family and Children First Councils. All MSY applications are actually vetted through the Family and Children First Councils, so they are aware of the youth and families in their community that is needing help. We receive applications for technical assistance only, funding request only, and then also applications for both. The MSY team has weekly standing appointments to review funding applications received. But outside of the regular MSY meeting, we also meet when necessary to review urgent applications, which could be for immediate placement or when facilities are holding a bed for a short period of time. I feel like the urgent meetings um, go in spurts, just to give you a little bit of feedback here. Yesterday, we had an urgent meeting scheduled for four different applications. It is possible that we could go a week at a time without having to meet for urgent applications, but that is not very often. We normally meet at least two to three separate meetings outside of our regular meetings. Our regular meeting starts at two o'clock and it can run till five or six, depending on the number of applications that we're reviewing. So I just wanted to kind of give you some general information about our meetings. Through discussions, the MSY team comes together to make determinations on the funding requests submitted. Most often, the team will also provide recommendations to the county care team as follow-up, which have been very well received. So we're on our third circle here. When funding is supported, our ODM fiscal department generates funds directly to the Family and Children First Councils. And this is done through our OAKS payment system, if anybody's familiar with it. From there, the Family and Children First is actually required to pay providers for services rendered. And then expenditure verification is required to be submitted to the Department of Medicaid. Another um, bullet point, which is not here, is sometimes reconciliation is warranted. So sometimes the county does not use all of the funding that was requested. And in that case, it is returned to ODM appropriately. So for every application that is funded, we do require case updates. And we did develop an, MIS, an MSY case update form to assist the county with this efforts. So if any of you know Bonnie hubbard Nicosia, she is my wingman, so to speak, and Bonnie tracks all of our MSY case updates. And we require MSY case updates every 30 days for any youth that is receiving residential treatment that funding is supporting. And then for youth that are receiving in-home or community supports, then we just request case updates once every 90 days. Next slide, please. So this slide provides an overview of the types of assistance that has been requested and MSY funding has supported, as well as some technical assistance highlights. So the funding requests that we receive actually range anywhere from in-home supports to residential treatment. So just some of the few supports or services that we've funded is respite for the youth or family, customized supports such as equine therapy or art therapy, additional staffing, peer support. We have assisted with home modifications such as a shower, new furniture, fencing, and then residential treatment, which I feel is like one of the biggest asks at this point. Mostly residential treatment is in Ohio, but we do have a few cases in which the services that the youth needed was not available within Ohio, so they were placed out of state. I just want to do a little plug here that MSY is the payer of last resort, so with every application we receive, um, we do look that all resources available were reasonably exhausted. So this could be like past funding for adopted children, or even if we're working with a family that has private insurance, you know, what can that private insurance provide? What we run into when it comes to residential treatment a lot of times is the fact that, you know, the medical portion can be taken care of, but it's the room and board that the family needs assistance with. So when we look at our technical assistance request, 
just some of the steps that we take when we receive those applications. The MSY team members outreach to the county to coordinate a technical assistance call. On that call, we connect entities that should be involved in the youth treatment team that maybe are not. So there are just a few examples here. DD, um, the family and children first if they're new to the case, um, and the school, just to name a few. And then if the child has Medicaid, we bring in the managed care plan organization to the team. Many counties had not considered the managed care plan in planning with the family. So not only are there managed care plans there to assist the youth and family, but they have become a total support for our counties as well. So the managed care plans can do referrals for placements. They can advocate for placements with the facilities. They can assist with transportation needs when the youth is getting placed. Um, and that's just some of a few things to mention, but they really are a strong linkage to the cases in which the managed care plan, um, you know, that the youth is enrolled in a managed care plan. And then of course, the technical assistance in general is really about bringing all the team members together and brainstorming and sharing resources. All of us come from a different background. So we all have our own little specialty. So, you know, there are ideas that come about that maybe others had not thought about. So this is where, you know, we bring in that village to try and come to a resolution to support our counties. Next slide, please. This slide is some general highlights regarding the MSY program. Funding and technical assistance has assisted youth with ages ranging from three years old to 19 years of age. And the MSY applications we review have a lot of complex case elements. Just to name a few here, dual diagnosis, trauma history, family history of substance use disorder, mental health, co-occurring behavioral health disorders, co-occurring developmental disability, behavioral health. And then as I'm sure all of you are well aware, social determinants of health play a huge role in most situations. And we have seen this only increase during our current pandemic. So economic stability, education, social and community context, health and health care, neighborhood and built environment, and some of the next few slides, um, we will actually kind of sort some of these elements out so you have more of a visual. Next slide, please. Okay, so over the next few slides um, is a visual for the specific areas regarding the MSY applications we have received. Please note that currently to date, we have received almost 810 MSY applications. The data that is represented on the next few slides was pulled from the applications received in just the first nine months. So for the sake of time, I'm not going to take a deep dive into each slide, but I wanted to provide these visuals to the team as I think it really creates a real picture of the challenges our youth and families are facing. Um, also, I don't think this is a surprise to any of you because of these weekly echo calls and all of you trying to assist these youth and families. So this first slide here is regarding the individual diagnoses that have been represented on the ap uh, applications we've received. So there along the bottom is all the different diagnoses we have seen. And of course, um, not all of them are captured here. Next slide, please. This slide here is regarding the multi-system agencies that are involved in the time at the time of application and more often than enough because this program is multi-system youth. Um, you know, youth are normally involved with at least, I wanna say at least three to four different agencies at the time that we receive the application. So again, it's all of these agencies coming together to try and assist these youth and families um, to succeed to the point of where we would like for them to be. And they would like to be, not just us. <laughs> There's a lot of self goals here. Alrighty, next slide, please. This slide represents um, youth current and past exposures. And much like the diagnosis slide and the multi-agency slide, 
youth normally have more than one. Um, I don't think that I've seen an application with just one current or past exposure. And of course, you know, this is normally what makes up to where families are where they are. So this is just a visual of that. Next slide, please. So this slide provides some data elements and funding outcomes restart regarding state fiscal year 2021, um, as we've just started into state fiscal year 22 and 23. So in state fiscal year 2021, we funded services and supports for 534 of Ohio's youth and families in 81 different counties. We also provided technical assistance to 94 additional youth and families across the state. And those 94 additional youth and families were applications that were just technical assistance only, that more often than enough did not result in funding request. So all of this reporting I just want to note is as of June 30th, which was the end of the fiscal year, June 30th, 2021. And as of that date, we had received 733 applications. You will see the breakdown here of what we provided as far as funding and or the program has provided as far as funding in state fiscal year 20. And this was just at the start of our funding period. And it was $4,838,622.98. State fiscal year over that course of state fiscal year 21, the total funding that was provided to counties was $14,626,000. $146.90. And then you will see the total here for the full state fiscal year was $19,464,769.88. So that is by far small change. We are very thankful for this program and I know the counties are as well. With each funded case, the program prevented a child from being relinquished or supported a child who had been relinquished as they reunited with their family. If that doesn't give you goosebumps, I'm not sure what will. At the end of the day, I can really say that our team is all here with the same goals and we consider these kids our kids. We refer to them as such in every team meeting that we have. I personally have never seen such passion, dedication, and determination as I have with this program and team. I said it at the beginning of the presentation, and I'll just say it again. I feel really blessed to be working with the MSY team that I, am, that I have. The cases we review and assist with are very challenging and sad to say the least. I feel like we have become our own little support group. <laughs> so um, it is, it's, it's tough work. And I know that is not surprising to any of you because you see that on your side of things as well. Next slide, please. So this slide just provides some resources as far as where the multi-system youth technical assistance and funding application, as well as the multi-system youth case update form can be located. And it's on Ohio's Family and Children First website. And it's directly under the MSYTA funding request tab, but a direct link has been provided here for quick access. For technical assistance regarding the application and or the updates, you know, questions in general about the program, anyone can outreach to the MSY email box that's stated here. And just as a reminder, if you're working with counties and if it ever comes up or if you are that person, any expenditure verifications or reconciliation requests should be submitted into the MSY email box. We actually triage those to the appropriate people. And then, you know, if there are any questions today or any questions that come to mind following today's presentation, you can always outreach to the MSY email box and we would be more than happy to assist. Next slide, please. So I feel like that was rather quick, <laughs> but at the same time, I know we didn't have a whole, whole lot of time. So, um, you know, if we have questions, Kara and Sandy, I'm, I'm open to um, addressing those for folks. 